I am going to begin my space painting here with three colors, and that is a primary red, a primary blue, and a titanium white. I am beginning with a large round-headed brush on a fully dried black canvas, and I'm doing all of this in a tapping motion. I'm beginning by creating a sphere-like shape in the middle of my canvas and just working my way out towards the edges as the paint dissipates from my brush. From there I am grabbing a blue pigment with a little bit of titanium white and working it along the edges of my initial application of pink. As the blue dissipates on my brush, I'm beginning to work it on top of the paints. And I'm doing this because acrylic paint dries very transparently. You can really see through it. And doing this, it's just going to enhance the colors. It's going to make it a little bit more interesting. The more layering you can do with acrylic paint, generally the better. Now, I'd also quickly like to talk about the application here. Why am I doing a tapping motion with the brush as opposed to a horizontal or a vertical stroke? And the answer, predominantly, is because I want to imply clusters of stars. And as you can start to see in the left side of the blue area, you kind of have these clusters of light in varying areas. It's just kind of emanating. And what this is all doing, it's going to create a base, a background, for stars very, very far away. We are going to actually paint on real stars, but these are just going to add to the depth, and it's going to look much more aesthetically pleasing than strokes moving from right to left. So with all of that being said, here I'm just continuing with this tapping motion, and it's also worth noting that I'm using a large round-headed brush as opposed to another brush because it doesn't have any sharp edges. And this is really helpful when I'm using a tapping motion because it's not rendering rectangles, it's not accidentally creating lines. I'm consistently getting a myriad of round applications. And they're all going to be a little bit different, which is fantastic, because when you want to render realism, a great goal, a great way of doing that is by creating inconsistencies. And an older brush, much like this large round-headed brush, does exactly that. So with all of that being said, here I'm just continuing to add more color to all of this. And you have to do a couple layers generally, because again, acrylic paint dries fairly transparently, and we're working on black, so everything really gets darker. This is a painting where we want light emanating from a myriad of stars, and so to achieve that light, you have to do a number of layers. Now, I do want the main subject to be the oval in the center, However, to make it look more interesting, to make it look like it's in a real environment, we have to add some to the background as I am here. But the trick is to ensure that it's a little bit less saturated and a little bit darker. That way, it doesn't steal the attention from our main subject, which we have promptly in the middle here. Now, you can see that we have a good amount of clusters being created. And that's exactly what you want. You kind of want it to look like a mess at this point in your painting, which I know sounds ridiculous, but sometimes you have to layer things on in an unaesthetic way to end up with a very aesthetic final piece. So don't get discouraged when you're painting. Sometimes if things don't look right, it's because they're not meant to yet. So with all of that being said, I'm just going in and adding more highlights, this time to the center. I'm taking that initial pink and I'm blending it out in all directions, but primarily to the left and the right. Again, this is a fairly circular motion, and I'm also leaving additional white in the foreground of our little sphere shape here. And that's just going to help instill depth. You want to create more light closer to you, closer to the subject, and then it dissipates as you move farther away. So now that we have a decent background, 
I'm going to create actual stars. And that is done, as you can see, by applying a lot of water to your brush and then applying a little bit of paint. Then you re-wet the brush and then simply take the back of the brush and fling the paint at the canvas. Now, this is best achieved, of course, when the brush is very, very wet. But when the brush is very wet, you're going to create larger stars. So it's something you're going to want to play with. You want um, stars of different sizes, just again to create more realism, more interest. And as you can see, you can even create lines when you put the brush very close to the canvas. And that's exactly what I'm doing to create this circular shape. I'm really trying to highlight the main portion of this, and then there are stars around it as well. But again, they're predominantly in the center in this circular shape that we are rendering. And I also added the most in the middle where the real light is going to be emanating from. I'm then taking my larger round-headed brush and I'm dabbing that area particularly. I really want this to be the bright area of focus. So from there, we are really getting somewhere, I think, and we're creating a good base. I'm then grabbing my medium-sized square-headed brush and I'm applying a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple, and I'm creating these lines within our area. I'm being very inconsistent with them. I'm not always applying my brush with the same pressure. I'm lifting it up sometimes, and this is just going to add more detail to our galaxies and our little solar system of stars here. You notice that none of my strokes are ever the same, and we're just, we're just adding interest to it. Now, with that being said, the black it really, really draws the eye in. So what we'll have to do is go back and add more stars on top of it. But right now, that's not something we're worried about. We're just trying to create a proper balance of the amount that we have in the areas that we have. Don't overdo it, but you also don't just want one, two, or three of them. You want a good number. And as you begin to apply more, you'll notice that they blend in more, which is very nice. So from there, as we previously mentioned, I'm just going in and adding additional stars over top that area, which is always great to work on the middle, right? Because again, that is where our eye is dominating. That's where we want it to go. So from there, I'm going in and I'm just applying more light, this time with that same round-headed brush that I used to apply the stars and I'm just kind of dabbing the edges, kind of creating a gradient out from the middle, and it's fairly wet right now. It's generally best to let the paint dry, go back, add more light, let it dry, go back, add more light, but we are trying to do this in just 10 minutes. So here I really am layering a lot of wet onto wet, and I'm also going to the edges and creating larger stars as well with my brush. You don't want to create all of your stars with your brush because it would take so long. But a couple here and there, creating them in this larger fashion, could imply planets, it could imply moons, it could imply other large galaxies. And so it's nice to incorporate a couple of them. Again, it adds life to your universe, it adds an additional diversity to it, and it just makes it so much more interesting. So from there, I'm taking a pink and I'm just adding more little strokes, just like the black ones that I applied initially. And I'm working them all around this circular shape that I have now in the center. So you can really see that the painting's coming along quite well, I think. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. And if you're working on yours too, I hope you're quite happy with it as well. But I'm also showing you here up at the top just how distracting it can be when you add in really bright stars. So this is just to show you that the background does need to be subdued, and if you add in those very light colors, it will really draw the eye away from the center where you really want it. So you can play with that. You can add some inconsistencies and some brighter areas out there, but you do need to tone them down to a point. 
you see that we're still working on it. We're adding additional stars and balancing it. However, the eye is really torn between that left area, which we now fixed, and the middle. So I'm not going to lie, I did cheat a little bit. There we have 10 minutes, but I did do an initial three or four. Just, it's, you, you have so much fun painting and you just want to continue and keep doing it. So I kind of just did more of the same and that's where we ended up here with this piece as well. So I truly hope you've enjoyed. I think I finally have this space theme out of my system. Next week we will do a fall painting to welcome the season.